Might as well get started here. Um, for those who don't know, I'm Mark Wendling. And along with uh, Derek Bain here, we co-chair this group. Um, uh, I'm going to be handing it over to Derek in a few minutes. He's He's got lots of good stuff. And uh, and I don't. <laughs> my, <laughs> my stuff's kind of at a standstill right now, as it seems to be as I get uh, busy with school. Um, just a just a couple things. Those that are looking at me saying, "Oh God, he looks a little gruff right now." Uh, here in Canada, in November, they have something called Movember, which uh, highlights man, uh, men's uh, health with cancer and stuff. So uh, basically, you're supposed to grow a mustache, but if I did that, nobody really would see it. So I just don't shave for the month, and my wife hates it, and that's just fine. Um, married 30 years, so I got to do something once in a while to tick her off. Um, so next, next month, you'll see that. Uh, reminder, I'm sure you all got the emails. Uh, there's still some time. It's uh, Giving Tuesday. Uh, Sabre sent stuff out. Um, whatever you donate today, Bill Nowland's uh, matching up to five grand. So, um, <clears throat> You know, in the U.S., you get a tax receipt. In Canada, we don't. Um, plus, you know, if I give five dollars uh, American, that's like three thousand Canadian. So, um, no, it's not quite that bad. Anyway, and uh, and just so you know where I am, I was just telling Derek it uh, is currently minus fifteen Celsius, and it feels like minus twenty three. Which, for those of you in the U.S., that's like minus five to minus six Fahrenheit. Um, and no, we don't close anything and it will get much colder as the week goes on. So I'm going to mute myself. Derek's got a, a whack of things and uh, I'll let you go. Go ahead, Derek. All right. Let me uh, let me try to share my screen out here. Let's see how this looks. I want to do, let's see. See if I can just share the entire screen and then I'll pull up the right thing here. Share that. All right. So can you see the uh, our saberbaseballgaming.com website on the screen now? Yeah, I can yeah. see it. Yeah, you're good? Nice. Okay. All right. So I'll start here. Um, if you're not familiar, this is our website for, for this committee. Um, so we've been uh, trying to build upon this uh, since Mark and I took over as co-chairs uh, a few months back, uh, you know, trying to uh, engage our, uh, our users to um, start posting some content here. Uh, so I'll just scroll through quickly. We've got a few new articles uh, here. Uh, this one here is uh, by Andy Palomino. This is um, a fantasy baseball auction league that he runs uh, using the AppBa uh, or APBA, depending on how you pronounce it, uh, the computer game. And uh, we started uh, doing some, uh, or reaching out to, to folks. Um, some of you have filled out the questionnaire that we sent out uh, to find out what games you own or owned in the past. Um, so we can uh, try to uh, put together uh, some articles, uh, basically your memories or uh, the mechanics of uh, specific games, uh, you know, the rules, the options, and so forth. So either, you know, if you're willing to uh, write an article on a game that you have, uh, a game that you play frequently, that type of thing, um, or if you want to create video content, maybe uh, whatever particular game it is, play a few innings of it, show show everyone how it's done, you know, when you when you refer to the charts, if it's a tabletop game. Uh, you know, if it's a computer game, you know, same deal, run through some of the menus, uh, some of the options, and, you know, maybe what's what's unique about the game. Um, so anyway, we've got some articles here. Um, if you're interested in contributing, just reach out to Mark or I, we can get, get you set up on the website to uh, uh, create an account so you can uh, become a contributor or an eventually an author uh, on the WordPress site. Um, and we have, uh, when we took over, there were five users, uh, registered on the site. Now we have 20, so may not be a big number, but, uh, we are, uh, 
we're, we're moving we're moving ahead with uh, you know getting people interested in the website again. Um, just real quick, numbers wise, uh, the website was receiving about 100 hits per month, which is not a whole lot. That was through August. Um, October, we were up to 311, and November, we're at 889 views. So, again, not a huge amount, but you can see we're trending in the right direction. So, um, happy to see that. Um, I did, uh, once we took ownership of the site, um, let's see, I added the questionnaire here. Uh, let me real quick, uh, I'll go to the video page. Um, I did create a YouTube account. We haven't uploaded anything to it yet, but if you're interested in doing the video series, we can uh, upload your content there. Or if you have your own YouTube channel, you can just send me the link and we can share it out that way. Um, but this is just some of the, um, I've done some playthroughs. Uh, so just let this, uh, you know, basically a list of computer games. Um, I'm into the kind of the old school 1980s, 1990s uh, games for the most part. So uh, some of you may recognize these from uh, back in the day. Here's Micro League. Um, just scroll through a few more of these. Uh, and we're coming up through the mid 80s. Earl Weaver Baseball was 86, 87, I believe. Uh, and if I have the games for the different, like this one's for the Amiga, this one's for the IBM. So if I have the different versions, I'll try to create a playthrough on each one just to show what the differences are. You know, sometimes the graphics are different. Uh, some more micro league games uh, on up through Tony La Russa, Hardball, et cetera. So that's basically the website. Um, give you some more info here. We do have, uh, I'm sure some of you are already on there. We do have a Facebook group now. Uh, we're up to 76 members there. Uh, we just started that, um, what was that, a little over a month ago maybe? Um, so we're, uh, we're getting some, you know, basically sharing out uh, the links to, you know, any new content that we're posting on the website there, uh, upcoming meetings, uh, so on and so forth. So, and it's another place, you know, you can just post whatever you want there about whatever, you know, game that you're interested in and, and you'll probably get feedback from uh, some of the other members. So, we get out of that. And we'll go to, let's see here. All right, so here's the questionnaire that we sent out. Uh, everybody who has responded already, I really appreciate it. Uh, we've gotten 62 responses to date. And uh, I'll just run through a couple of the numbers real quick. Um, as far as the responses, we can look at the data here. Yeah, it, it basically it'll show me who's responded. Um, there's some, uh, this is using Google Forms. So I had to kind of get up to speed on how to use this, but. Um, so we actually had more people respond that are not members of the committee yet. Um, I think this is actually a good thing because it might encourage people to join us. Uh, I did, uh, I shared the link to this questionnaire on multiple Facebook groups, uh, Twitter, several other places. So uh, let's see, are you willing to contribute content uh, regarding any of the games that you own? So only 13% responded no. So that's, we got 34% uh, maybes and over half said that yes, they would. So scroll down a little bit further here. So not really thrilled how this shows up here. This It shows like every other game in the list. So you, you kind of have to highlight over the ones, you know, um, but just real quick, the um, the highest ownership on the console baseball games is, let me scroll down a bit. I think that one was RBI. Yeah, RBI baseball. And there were a couple with six a piece. I think it was MLB, uh, where is it? MLB the show. And what was the other one? Oh, Bases Loaded. That was up here. So uh, old uh, Nintendo game, Bases Loaded. Uh, and RBI was also Nintendo. And probably, what else? There. Yeah, Genesis, Nintendo. Um, so those are the top three there. Computer games. 
the top dogs here were uh, Diamond Mind, 16. Uh, Out of the Park, 16. Uh, 14 with Action PC. And, and Digital Diamond had nine. And I think there was one or two others. Uh, yeah, uh, the uh, APBA Baseball for Windows and Broadcast Blast, eight apiece. Everybody else was uh, less than that. Um, it's just interesting to see a different, you know, a mix of some of the older and newer games and who has them. Based off of this, we can reach out to people and see if they would be willing to contribute a review or, a, you know, play through video for it. Um, these are like the, the upright arcade games. We've got two people that have RBI baseball. Uh, let's see, tabletop. All right, so highest number is no surprise, Stratomatic, 36. Uh, we've got APBA. So this is where it gets a little bit interesting because there's several flavors of this. So there's 24 with the, I guess, like the standard game. Uh, you've got the master game. You've got AppBot Pro. Um, 50th anniversary. So if you added all these up, it might be higher than Strat, but I have a feeling this is there's just some overlap here. So um, what was the other one? There was 20. Oh, Status Pro had 22. Not Strat, Status Pro, 22. And I think there were a few others. So yeah, Pursue the Pennant, 15. Uh, Dynasty, which is what used to be Pursue the Pennant has nine. So if you combine them, you've got 24. And Replay, I think, was the other one that was up there. Replay, 19 for Replay. So pretty good mix there. Um, let's run through a few more of these board games. Not so many people with just the standard board games. And some of these I might have categorized incorrectly. So my apologies if that's the case. We've got seven for Baseball Strategy. Uh, this one seems to be popular, History Maker, 16 of those. MLB Showdown card game, five of those. And everybody else pretty much one, two. Uh, a couple more here. Handheld Electronics, this one takes the cake by quite a bit. The uh, Mattel Baseball, 14. Um, and then Head-to-Head -head Electronic Baseball by Coleco, five of them. Everybody else one and two pretty much. Uh, pinball games, not not such a hot category, it looks like. A couple old century baseball. And then we have the uh, browser-based online games. So uh, AppBot Go, 10 of those. Strat, 365, 7. Dynasty League, 6. Diamond Mine, 4. A couple others here. Uh, mobile games, not too many. Uh, the, uh, out of the Park. Uh, for the uh, iPad, iPhone with a couple. So that's um, that's basically it for the questionnaire so far. Like I said, we've got 62 responses. Uh, if you haven't replied yet, don't mind taking a few minutes. That would be great. We'd love to hear what, what games you have. Um, even if you're not uh, interested in contributing uh, content for the site, uh, we'd love to know at least, you know, what everybody owns and, uh, and it's owned or owned currently. So if it's something you played, you know, 20, 30 years ago, you don't own it anymore, I'd still count it. You know, if, if you have any memory, any, any recollection of it, throw it on here. So uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna wrap up. I think that was, that covers most of the numbers I had here. Oh, the other thing was um, committee membership. So since, uh, since August, we added 12 new members. Um, we were up to 262. So um, I don't know, we'd love to keep pushing that forward as well. And I'm going to stop the screen share now. Uh, if anybody has any questions on what we just reviewed there or, um, you know, willing to, you know, if you're willing to contribute or, or uh, anything with the questionnaire, again, just reach out to uh, Mark or myself. 
That's kind of neat. And I saw my name as being delinquent on two different emails to get something in. So uh, I'm a bad boy. Um, that's awesome work. And I know you're always doing more and more. I mean, I think I, instead of being an accountant, I should have went into IT because I would have all this extra time, I think. Um, but anyway, anyway, it's, um, essentially tonight we're, we're looking at kind of an open, an open table, um, stuff people are working on because we know there's stuff out there and, uh, it'd be great to get to know, um, you know, Derek mentioned, you know, we went from five to 20 people registered on that, on, on the Sabre baseball gaming site. As far as I'm concerned, when I write the report or pardon me, we write the report up, that'll say, uh, we, we had a 400% growth, um, not just five to 20, of course not, you know, as an accountant, I, I know how to make some numbers look good when I need to. Um, but yeah, this is a chance for you guys to talk and, uh, uh, right at the end, I, I want to talk a little bit about Chicago, some stuff that Derek and I have been talking about uh, that we might do, but uh, it's definitely not in our wheelhouse and we may need some help. So if, has anybody got some stuff they want to share? Oh, come on, guys. Don't be shy. I recall, Dan, you're working on something. Yeah, no, I, I am. I've uh, been doing a, I was doing it before, even before they mentioned, even before I was in the group. Um, I, I've been doing a stratomatic tournament of sort of, you know, uh, the kind of, you know, the greatest teams of all time. And I think I've got up to like, as I keep buying more cards, I'm up to like 240, um, 240 some odd teams in the tournament. And I'm kind of, you know, playing, playing a series um, every couple of days. So I would, I have to get myself organized a little bit as far as like, you know, some of the recaps I've typed up and that kind of thing, but I'd love to um, go on the website and, you know, kind of post the results to that tournament as, as it goes on, it'll probably be a, um, probably be a multi-year thing, but I, if that, if that would be sort of an appropriate thing, I would love to love to have that as a, um, as an outlet to, to type up the, you know, to kind of put out this tournament that I'm doing. Yeah, that's exactly what we're looking for. Any, anything like that. Yeah, if you want to share your results as you're going through it, that would be perfect uh, venue for that, I believe. Yeah, yeah de definitely. Thank you. I think, um, uh, you know, over the next, you know, month or two, I want to kind of, you know, in addition to continuing to play it, kind of like get myself in a good place with recaps and stuff. Um, but yeah, it definitely, you know, sometime early next year, it's something I'd love to get started with. Dan, is that is that something you're doing with the cards and dice, or is that the computer game? It's the cards and dice, which was in retrospect a poor decision. <laughs> it's more expensive, and there's not a ton of room in the houses as I keep buying these cards. But it's all yeah. the cards and dice, yeah. Cool, it's old school. Are you using any any type of software to track the stats? I I've never used iScore. I think it's called, but it's I, I hear it's pretty good. I downloaded something called Ball Score, okay. which has a um, so it's it's basically it's actually two programs. It's Ball Score, which is the scoring you know that you actually do the scoring on, and then it um it you can then import the stats to Ball Stat, which is its um uh you know its companion, and that's where you can get like you know team stats and that kind of thing. You know, calculate batting averages and stuff. It took me a little while to figure out how to use it, and I because I kept messing it up. It is very, very confusing when you first start using it, um, and it's a type of thing where if you make one mistake, um, you you've kind of like almost got to start over. But okay. once you get the hang of it, it, it's really good. So that's what I've been using. I, I score, I think, is only for. Um, I could be wrong about this, but so maybe it's only for Apple products, or maybe I'm using that with something else. But um, I remember looking at iScore, and maybe it was just because I didn't want to pay, but there was some reason why I didn't go with iScore. Dan, you might want to take a look at, and we can, we can drop you the link of last, last meeting we had. Um, we had, and I can't think of the name. Derek, Derek will know it. Derek remembers everything. Um, the, the name of the uh, software. Um, uh, Digital Diamond? 
Yeah, d okay. diamond, uh, digital diamond. Digital diamond. And yeah, it has digital a, diamond. It has a functionality to uh, keep track of all that stuff for you. Oh, I will. I will check it out. <laughs> and Thank if you. it will, will. Uh, if you drop us an email, I, I, I think I still have the link that uh, it was set up on the YouTube or uh, Sabres saves them for about six months or so. And they, this meeting, for example, tonight is being, is being uh, recorded. So you can yeah. take a look at, and he did a demonstration and everything for, for exactly uh, that game that you're playing. Mm -hmm. So, you know what, I think, I think that might help you out. Great. I'll take a look. Thank you. I, I mean, there's a cost to it, but I don't think it's, prohibitive at all i think it's 24.95 um and basically what you do is you, you you play out the games you roll the dice manually you enter in the results and then it basically it'll track it with you know and, and then you have like the you know all the reporting and everything that goes along with that thank you, uh, I'll out. Thank you. yeah yep. yes sir. I, I love the opportunity. So thanks, guys. That's yeah, great. I mean, this is what it's for. We, Derek and I, swore up and down when we we agreed to do this that we weren't going to say no to anything. Um, uh, I mean, unless it was illegal, um, or oh. or not not in good taste, you know, you know those kind of saber rules. But um, you know, for some of the people that were here when this originally started in about the 25th, 2016, 2017, it was really based around Stratomatic. And um, <clears throat> I've never played the game. I've never seen it played. And uh, I'm, I'm not sure, Derek, you, you haven't played it either, have you? I've played the computer version, the old DOS version. I've never played the uh, tabletop version. Um, tabletop, I'm, I'm a little, little bit lean on. I've, I've done a, a handful of... Uh, uh, the uh, APBA and replay are pretty much the two that I've tried out, um, but I'm more the uh, uh, the computer sim. Uh, I've got the computer stuff covered, I think. I think yeah, so. so. You know, we're not saying no to anything, and you know, I think um, you know a lot of the new generation. You know, we see new generation. God, I I feel old some days. Um, you know, you got MLB the show. You got you know games that are for consoles you got games like OTP where where you actually um you can be as down playing as the manager or you can be the owner right it depends what people are looking for and because it's so wide like that now i think i think we have to have that that ability but uh nobody wants to hear me talk so <clears throat> who's got something else they want to share Well, I, I don't want to put Andy on the spot, but we did. Uh, uh, he recently uh, submitted an article, and I think before you got here, Andy, I, I had mentioned uh, some of the new articles on the website. I don't know if you want to take a minute and just kind of briefly um, run through, uh, you know, what what your site is about. Yeah, I can give you guys a quick a quick update. So I've I've been involved in the APBA uh, computer game, so I have played the card game in the past. And I actually am one of the one of those that has has also played Stratomatic. But I started with APBA, and I do see where Stratomatic can be a better game. But sometimes you have a tie, an emotional tie to the game that you first started with. So I kind of stuck with APBA over the years. And I also always liked the APBA cards a little bit better than the Stratomatic cards. It just seemed a little bit more sturdy to me and more colorful. But uh, the project that I've been involved in is uh, back when we were sequestered during COVID. I started a little website where uh, I've sort of melded the the best of fantasy baseball in my mind with uh, with simulation baseball. So what I end, what I ended up doing is um, I've been running a, a fantasy baseball league now since 1989. A couple of them, as a matter of fact, and we've never drafted. We've always held our auctions every year to stock our teams. So the 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 auctions I've always felt were for me more fun and actually more challenging as well. So, to, so the idea that I had was, okay, well, what would happen if you had an opportunity to create teams of uh, simulation baseball teams, not fantasy baseball teams, using that auction format? So somewhere along the line, I stumbled onto the APBA computer game and I said, all right, I think I might be able to do something with this. And this might be the platform that I could use to kind of play out this idea. So 
Fast forward, I ended up buying every single APBA computer season. So it's sort of like what Dan did, just uh, kind of stocking up on seasons. So I basically have every season and have the ability now to, for example, tomorrow I have, not tomorrow, Thursday, I have an auction set up with three guys. So basically myself and two others, I'll schedule a Zoom meeting and we're going to take the 2006 Yankees, 2006 Twins and 2006 Tigers we're going to make all the players on those teams free agents. And we're going to basically construct three brand new teams from all the players of those real historical teams. And we're going to do that through an auction process, which is really cool because again, and what I, what I mentioned in the article I published a few days ago, when you play fantasy baseball, you have all this software out there that will pretty much tell you what, should, what you should be paying on guys. When you do this project, you don't have a roadmap. You have to dictate what your valuation process is gonna be for these players. So basically we hold the auction, we create three brand new teams. And then uh, I ask the participants, myself included, to submit lineups. And uh, the game allows you to also uh, select a, a micromanager or computer manager. So then probably a couple of days later, I'll set up another Zoom meeting where we actually simulate seasons. So we hold a World Series where every season is a proxy for a game. So whoever wins four simulated seasons actually wins the World Series, basically. And the, the computer game has the ability to simulate a, an entire season for three teams in a matter of minutes. So in a matter of 20 minutes, we'll know who actually had the best team. And, and again, each season counts as a game. So by the time you're done, you'll know without a shadow of a doubt who actually created the best team. So it's, uh, it's pretty challenging. It's, uh, and, and, and tons of fun. So Derek knows because he's participated in a few auctions with us. Yes. Yeah, we had, uh, what did we do? Kind of the, uh, the best of the Cubs uh, from, from best the last Best of the Cubs, years. yeah. And we, yep, did, we did, I think it. we did some Angels greatest teams as well that we deconstructed. Yep. Yeah, so... And, uh, and Derek actually drafted his son as well. So it was kind of like a father and son uh, mano a mano, which was pretty cool. Right. Yeah. Now we had a lot of fun. And then uh, the, the last one we did, what did we have? Eight, eight or nine owners, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, yeah. the last one we did a draft. We, we actually took the 1981 season and we deconstructed the end. We, we basically made the entire player population of 1981 free agents. And then there we didn't do an auction. We actually did a draft. We had about eight participants. And then the rest of the teams in the league were actually drafted by the computer manager, by the computer itself, which, which is also another ability the game has. So we, we kind of uh, played out the entire 1981 season to see what the stats would have turned out to be if the season had not become short, cut short by a strike. So, so it's lots of fun. If you guys ever wanted a, a little bit of a challenge uh, and you wanted to deconstruct a couple of teams, let me know and I could always set up a little uh, a little auction. The, the smaller groupings of players I actually do through Zoom, but the auctions that involve probably anywhere between six or more players, I actually do straight through my website. So I actually have an embedded auction program that allows you to do an, uh, an auction through the website. Normally when it's a larger group of people, I run the auction over a span of days. So that way, you know, you don't have to block in an entire span of time to devote on one night. I, I spread it out over a span of probably a couple of weeks. So, Andy, do you find a lot of guys um, <clears throat> bid with their hearts instead of their heads? You know, um, definitely a little bit of that, which is the same thing that happens in fantasy baseball. Uh, I, I definitely don't. I'm, I'm in it to, you know, to win it. <laughs> so I try not to not to bid with my heart, but definitely some guys will do that. I think, as a matter of fact, in the uh, in the Angels auctions, Derek, I forget the four teams we deconstructed in the Angels auction, but I know there was a little bit of hard bidding there between between Derek and Tom. Tom, I forget, is he your yeah, cousin? Tom is Tom is my cousin. Yeah. yeah. So Tom and Derek got into a real mano a mano with, over Mike Trout, and Mike Trout ended up going for fifty dollars. Uh, which which was way too much, but but yeah, there's some guys that definitely will get into into bidding with their hearts, for sure. Yeah, I think we did. Uh, well, we definitely did the 2002, um, 86 Angels, 86, and then it might have yeah. been like this 79 and 82, something like that. But basically, whatever 
whenever they made it to the playoffs, I think we're, we're yeah, exactly. Years. So, but uh, well, what I have found is that there's no um, there's no real magic bullet to winning. Uh, we've had a couple of teams win with uh, just enough hitting and a lot of pitching, and and the converse of that. And then we've had we've had guys win with overwhelming pitching. Uh, but it also depends on how many teams you're deconstructing. So if you deconstruct four real teams to make three sim teams, then you have a, an excess of talent and you can afford to be aggressive with pitching bids. But if you deconstruct three real teams to make three sim teams, you have to have a balanced team. Otherwise, you're not going to win. So it's, uh, it's, been, it's been a lot of fun. I just wish I didn't have a real job that takes away from me working on that project. <laughs> So, yeah, no, definitely lots of fun. Highly recommended if anybody wants to join yeah. up, even, you know, even play it, play it once just to try it out. Um, yeah. But we had a blast. You know, like I said, I got my cousin involved. I got my son involved. So a um, lot, a lot of fun. Cool. And I've been meaning to try the APBA or rather the Stratomatic computer game. I haven't played that, but I wanted to see if, if the idea that I've created would, would translate also to the Stratomatic computer game. So that's on my, on my to-do list. Yes, it, 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 you can do that. Yeah. Including yeah. the drafting. Um, the, the draft software, uh, the brain there is not that great. So if your computer's picking teams, it gets a little... It, it's a little hanky, but if you have you have people control the picks too, that um, you can delete all the players. You can um, you, you can yeah you can do all that both though. What about what about simulating seasons, Bart? Is that something yeah, that can be you done? Can, yeah, you can auto play. Okay, you know, auto play pretty quickly. It sounds like very similar to APBA. Excellent, excellent. And you have the computer manager you can add in, so it doesn't you know factors in yeah. some of that. I figured there would be quite a few similarities between the two because obviously the two companies are competing with each other. So, yeah. Cool. All right. Okay. So somebody else got something they want to share? Matthew, weren't you working on some programming? No, not yet. I, I am one <laughs> by, by my it pays me, so I usually don't get on the computer much when I get home. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just new to this club and trying to embrace the committee and see what's going on, see how I can be a part. Cool. I don't, uh, John, I don't know if you want to unmute and talk about, uh, you, you had posted that uh, article on the Bandai Electronic Baseball, and it, it looks like you got the... Uh, quite the uh, collection there of the, the handheld games. Oh, John's still with us there. Yeah. Well, I'll throw something out if, if you're interested in them. And this is my first time uh, attending and I just saw the uh, retweet that appeared a couple of, a week or two ago by Sabre about games and simulation. And at the risk of boring everybody to tears, I'm interested in the programming side of it. And uh, I don't want to go into it too deeply, but um, that's what I'm interested in. So I'm not sure if it's the right place or not. I don't play any games. I know it's probably sacrilegious to most of you to say that, but um, I'm interested in modeling and programming. So. No, you're, I think you came to the right place. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yep. There's, well, there's definitely several others. Now, are you looking at programming to to do uh, specific studies, or you're looking to like create a new game, or? Uh, oh no, I'm not interested in a game. I, I'm interested in one of the things I do with simulation is to model batting order, and and the other thing I'm very interested in is to um, uh, model or or try to simulate games based on current lineups. So I'll, I'll go through each major league baseball season as it goes by and download the lineups for the day and uh, try to simulate the game and predict the outcome. And all of everything I do is based on the uh, simulation algorithm that's in Marchie and Albert, if anybody's familiar with that, analyzing baseball data with R. And I just uh, took that and ran with that and decided that if you could simulate uh, 
it's all ba using uh, the probability of transition state changes. And I hope nobody's eyes are glazing over yet. Um, to uh, accumulate a, a 27 out scenario and try to figure out which team's going to score the most runs at the end of the nine innings. So it's just something that's, it keeps me uh, in, into programming. It's a good excuse to fart around with baseball data, which is what I've always enjoyed doing. I'm an old uh, rotisserie player and uh, got tired of uh, that uh, part of the of baseball because it just became too time consuming and decided I was more interested in going on into some other stuff. So, so, so Tim, uh, two questions. One, uh, the first question is, um, if you're trying to find the optimum batting order and stuff, I'm curious which teams uh, seem to be setting theirs up to, you know, what your model comes to and which ones are so far off. And well, the second one is, are you, are you simming these and then putting a few ducats down on them? Uh, well, I, I, keep, I keep track of uh, how it does against um, Pinnacle's lines because uh, for amusement purposes only though. And uh, it, it, uh, what I'm interested in is improving the modeling because right now I have the assumption that, well, it runs on the assumption mm -hmm. that starting pitcher pitches all nine innings, which of course doesn't happen anymore. So one of the things I'm always trying to do from one year to the next is uh, improve the modeling <clears throat> basics of it. So one of the things I'm working on this winter is to uh, program in having the starter pitch nine inning, excuse me, six innings, which is about all anybody lasts anymore. And then every team has to put in what I'll call a league average relief or a league average bullpen after that and see how it goes. But when I'm simulating, because it's um, using probabilities is I can simulate each game thousands, in fact, a hundred thousand. Well, actually, no, I only do 50,000 times, but from that, I can calculate what I think the money line should be and compare that to what the actual money line is and then say, yes, I'm under these conditions. I might have bet some money and I might not have. So I made a little bit of money last season, but not, not very much, but uh, always interested in keeping, that's, that's your measure of success uh, to see how well your model works. Uh, as far as batting order goes, that's one of the reasons why I'm always interested in meeting up with or talking to people who do actually do the programming side of simulation, because my problem right now is that uh, I need a tremendous amount of computer firepower to simulate for batting order, because any nine players, there's over 300,000 combinations. Uh, uh, permutations and combinations uh, or different orders that you can get from those nine guys. And I think if you want to be a good modeler, you have to look at all the combinations, even though you say you're, you're never going to start the worst batter first, probably. Um, but in order to test them all times the number of combinations, it takes about 16 to 18 hours for my computer to run it. Wow. And uh, that's doing um, 50 to 100,000 simulations of each combination. So 50,000 combinations of 300,000 combinations. And that's on, I've got a couple of reasonably high powered desktop computers here. And uh, like I said, to just to do one team takes about 15 hours. So one of the things I'm looking for is to get in touch with somebody down the road who knows how to use their GPU, the graphics card to handle some of the programming and uh, speed things up. So for example, one of the things I did was I played around with uh, everything I do is is from the data that's downloaded from RetroSheet. And so I played around with the 1930 Yankees and said, what, what, what should have been their batting order? Which I can't remember now. I always have to look these things up. I'm getting a little older, so I don't remember all, all the stuff I figured out. But it was fun playing around with uh, the 30 Yankees. Uh, I did the 92 Js. Um, I've done quite a bunch of them, but I, I, I get doing it and then I get bogged down by the the time it's going to take and I'm always looking for a faster way to do it. So what I've been doing the last couple of years is to try to simulate games uh, during the major league season because there, of course there's only 15 games max in any one day and I can simulate 15 games 50,000 times in about 
uh, takes about 25 minutes. Yeah. Tim, the 61 uh, Yankees would be interesting. What's that? The 61 Yankees would be an interesting team to. Oh yeah, no, I can, I can do they something. They probably like had that. the worst possible lineup when they were still great. Yeah. Uh, well, what's they, they, they had uh, they had what Richardson leading off with like a, a two ninety uh, yeah. on base Kubek, percentage. Yeah, Richardson and Kubek. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> two worst hitters in the lineup let off. <laughs> I was I was reading something the other day, uh, maybe late nineteen thirties Yankees. Uh, Frankie Crisetti was the leadoff hitter, and he hit one ninety three that year. <laughs> I was like, yeah, uh, yeah we might want to might want to rethink that. Reconsider that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds kind of neat. I guess I, I forgot. I mean, here in Canada, gambling's all pretty much legal now. So and now I, I just remembered in a number of the states down there, it's not. So I guess that that was not a good question to ask. But yeah. uh, but anyway, I asked it and that was that. So, um, uh, John, we were calling you and uh, you weren't answering. Derek, Derek had some questions for you. And maybe you had some information to share based on uh, some of the work you've done. Yeah, I just I thought if uh, if you wanted to share real quick the um, you know you you'd posted the uh, article on the Bandai Electronic Baseball and it and it sounded like you got quite the collection there of, of the handheld games. So if you wanted to just briefly touch on that. Yeah, sure. Sorry, I've been in and out of decorating for a party we're having Friday, so I've had some discussions regarding placement of things with my wife. So I'm sorry, I've been in and out. No, um, no problem. Yeah, I, I know that, um, Derek, I reached out to you with a question because I kind of thought that this committee, at least in its previous incarnation, kind of dealt more with um, strategy games, tabletops, simulations, and so forth. And I, I wasn't really in that realm, but I was kind of more of a player and collector of old um, handheld games, electronic tabletop games and cartridge-based games, you know, kind of from the Super Nintendo going back towards Atari and even some of those other earlier systems, the Emerson Arcadia and the Fairchild Channel F and so forth. So when I reached out, you said it would be interesting to maybe see some articles about some of the games I have. I have kind of a blog that I put together called, it's electronic, electronicbaseball.blogspot, I think is what it is. I don't really update it real often, but if you wanted to check it out, you could kind of see the games in my collection. And it was kind of fun. You had mentioned maybe doing playthrough videos. So it's given me an excuse to kind of get the games out of the boxes in our storage closet and pop batteries in it and so forth. And I don't know if the Bandai game is maybe the best game to do that with, because it's really basic. It's you basically, you hit the button, you release it, the LEDs light up and wherever it lands, that's what you have. It's either a single, a double, a home run or an out. And it's pretty boring. There's really not much play value, but there's some of the ones that I remember from when I was a kid. I know on your presentation, you said that the Mattel was the one that most people seem to have. Right. The Coleco right. was the next one that head to head. I think most of my yeah. friends had that one too. Uh, the one that really got me into it was the Entex baseball. And that game's a lot of fun. It's the one if you if you know it, it's it's kind of black. It's maybe about eight by ten in size, and it had the feature where the pitching was a little square box attached to a wire that you could actually pull out of the unit, and you could kind of hide it, and you would play against your friend and decide which pitch to throw, including a knuckleball that really didn't do anything. <laughs> but um, I, I was kind of coming at the committee and uh, participating kind of more from a, the retro um, kind of nostalgia standpoint. And I know Derek, you said that you kind of have, I see you've got a Commodore 64 shirt on. So I know you must have played yes. games on that and so forth. So that's all it was. And, and I really, I enjoy writing about it. Um, I enjoy collecting them. I like getting the different box variations. I know Mark in Canada, you were getting different versions of them, um, not only bilingual, but in a lot of ways, um, sometimes the box itself would be different. Um, a lot of the end text games, the play field is different instead of using English words to describe the different positions and the different things that happen. They have little icons or caricatures of the players and so forth. So um, 
that's really that's really kind of where I'm coming from. Is I, I I'm looking for an excuse to get these things out and play them. So, <laughs> but um, I know you mentioned too, and if it's for later in the the program, that's fine. But I'm based in Chicago. If you're looking for information about um, planning for the national here next year. Um, either I'm happy to talk about it later in your presentation or um, on the side too. I'm, I'm willing to help as much as I can. So That would be great. My son is a Cubs fan and we were oh, hoping good. to maybe get, maybe come in a day or two early because I think the week of the convention, at least when I looked at the schedule, they were playing the White Sox were going to be in town, but I think the Cubs were going to be away that week. Uh, so uh, yeah, any, any uh, tips uh, on you know how to how to obtain tickets and and maybe where to stay before the convention if we come in a day or two early you know sure yeah i've already looked i believe the schedule has the cubs playing wednesday they do not play thursday and based on as long as i've been a cubs fan the wednesday game is usually an afternoon game a getaway day um so i know they don't they don't have the times issued yet but i think it's pretty rare to have a wednesday night game Sure. But, um, yeah, whatever tips you're looking for, I'm happy to help. Perfect. Oh, that's great. And yeah, all I know uh, is the, the the front end of the week that we're there. They're playing the Blue Jays. I ain't planning to do anything in the evenings, but go see the Jays. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> so, yep. Yeah. You know, no. Uh, like you were saying, um, whatever the committee was in the past, uh, you know, Mark and I kind of agreed, like, let's, let's make it as, uh, you know, ex expansive as possible, you know, kind of anything that falls under games simulations, you know, whether it's, you know, fantasy, whether it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, basically any, anything that, that you can think of, if, you know, if there is a category I missed on the questionnaire, you're like, Hey, you forgot this, we'll throw it on there, you know, want to be more inclusive, I guess. And uh, even even if it's not a simulation, you know, we're games and simulations. So uh, to me, it counts, you know, if, if you're playing a, an arcade based uh, console game, there's still some value to that. People are interested, people people still, like you said, uh, you know, you go back to the Fairchild system, you know, got old, uh, I've got an old uh, uh, Intellivision, Atari, got a Commodore back here, so, um, you know, all that, all that stuff is, is good as far as I'm concerned. Um, one, one of my thoughts that I might have brought up in a, in a previous meeting is, is kind of preserving this stuff. There's, there's certain games that I had uh, back in the day that I no longer have the media for it. And when I look online, it's, it's almost like they didn't even exist. Uh, there were several games I found um, an advertisement in an old uh, compute magazine, and that's about it. You know, otherwise you can't find any information on, on a couple of these games. So uh, that's an, that's another reason for the outreach is, you know, and the, the off chance that somebody has one of these things, you know, stuffed away in a closet somewhere. You're like, oh, oh, yeah, I remember that thing. You know, even if you don't have a computer to fire it up on anymore, if you can, you know, send us a picture of the artwork on the box or, the, you know, scan the manual in or something, you know, some, some way to preserve, you know, the, the stuff, some of it's, you know, you know, on the, on the computer and console side, some of it's pushing 50 years and, uh, you know, tabletop board games, some of it goes back to the, you know, late 1800s. I know there's, there's baseball games, so. Yeah, we, uh, we received an email from somebody and I can't think of, I can't think of who it is. So if they're here tonight, I, I apologize, but just in the last few days and talking about a, a game they played back in the 40s or the 50s, and um, I actually took a look and found it on eBay so I could take a look and see kind of, you know, um, what it looked like in that, and, you know, it, it's kind of neat. I mean, this stuff goes, goes way back. And um, the other thing that is quite interesting that we've learned since doing this is, you know, various simulations, whether it's OOTP, APBA, any of them, the major league teams are using these. And they are simulating many, many times. And, and you know, um, we actually heard, I believe, one of the teams in the, in the Midwest uh, actually do it when they're hiring coaches and stuff. And they, or, or, to, or to teach their coaches and that. And they say, okay, what would you make the decision here? And they have it set up and they, 
they play it through multiple times so they could see, well, maybe that wasn't the best decision, not saying you shouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Although <clears throat> we can, uh, you know, always have the discussion and the, the argument, um, should we always do what the computer says? You know, when do, when do your eyes take over? Um, and it's, uh, <clears throat> it's a, it's a very interesting, uh, discussion to have. I mean, uh, here, here in, uh, Canada, when we hear, uh, old Buck Martinez, uh, do the games and stuff, uh, he's constantly saying that, you know, he says, why are they taking them out? He's throwing great, you know, yes, I know it's third time through the order, but I think it's a mistake. Use your eyes, guys, use your eyes. And, um, as an accountant, you know, that's, I fear that, uh, cause I'm a, a managerial accountant. So, you know, we lose models and stuff and, and I'm teaching my students, you know, you know, that's great. The numbers say this, but this could be the exception, you know, this could be the, the outlier and you got to use your eyes always. And, uh, but you know, well, the, you know, the element of surprise too, right? If you, if you always, you know, you're always going to sacrifice bunt in a certain situation. Well, you know, it kind of defeats the purpose, right? Or, you know, I know Billy Martin every once in a while would just, you know, would put the squeeze play on or, you know, have, have all the runners in motion or something, you know, just to throw the other guy off, you know, keep them on their toes. But, um, and I, I recall reading in, I think it was one of the Bill James abstracts where he, he had said something to the effect of, uh, every every new manager should have to play it like a thousand you know tabletop games you know before they can uh uh you know be hired as a manager yeah yeah i and i you know it's like anything you know that they take the pendulum too far one way and then it'll start coming back um you know it was interesting i i read Tom Stone sent us some information some, on some statistics he was doing. It's a little bit outside of this realm. And, um, you know, I, I'd love to take some of it further. You know, the, the um, steals, I think it was, you know, they're uh, a bit more successful now than they have been in the past few years. But that's because they're doing it less. And the only ones doing it are the ones that have a high probability of, of getting it. <laughs> Exactly. So, you know, you almost got to take the successful steal percentage and above it put attempted steals. And, and you see, you'll see the, you know, that's, that's something I was kind of saying to him, you know, you gotta, you want to see what, you know, what, what, how many are actually doing it because if it's going down and, you know, you can say this makes sense. It's, it's interesting. Um, and it's fun. I mean, that's why we do these things. So Wait. You have all, all these all these new scenarios every year now. It seems with the with the new rules, right? So now you got to simulate. Okay, what you know the scenario with the ghost runner? Okay, do we sacrifice the runner over? You know, um, uh, the new rule coming up with the um, the pickoff. You can only do how many pickoff moves to first, right? Or you know that type of that type of thing. So our steel is going to go up. Um, so that there's just so many. There's just so many avenues of research, I think, that, that kind of fit into this committee. You know, it's just what you're interested in and, and what you, you're willing to share with the group, I guess, is, yeah. is, is what we're trying to get at. So, And, you know, we model these things and that's what everybody else is doing. And, and it's great. I mean, uh, but anyway, I don't want to steal. I don't want to steal. Uh, anybody else have something they want to share? work they're doing I uh, see. Go ahead. I, uh so I'm a no oh, thank you I'm a very new member to Sabre and uh this is you know something I've been interested in and this committee seems like something you know it's my first time attending and uh I'm looking forward to getting into this and really getting to contribute to this type of uh community and I think this space is awesome I mean I'm 15 I don't know many 15 year olds doing this so, uh, yeah, no, I really appreciate all you guys and everyone on the committee. And uh, thank you for your time, guys. This has been great. What um, what, what games, do you have uh, specific games that you're interested in to this point or? Yeah, I have uh, over 300 hours in Outer Park Baseball this year. Um, I have some old Nintendo games that I can run and a lot of computer games. So stuff like that. Good. It's a good mix. Yeah. 
Sounds good. Welcome to the uh, welcome to the team. Yeah, that was one of the things when we did this too. We figured uh, this committee was going to be uh, appealing to younger, new people in the uh, uh, in our community. And Elwood, thank you because now when we write our report before it goes to the you know to our uh, thing at the uh, in Chicago this year, you know we can honestly say yes, we we're we're getting new younger people here. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, as an accountant, I can make the numbers say what we need to. Uh, yeah. Um, that, um, that's one of the, uh, let me, uh, let me just interject on that too. Um, uh, I, I definitely got an assist from, uh, from my boys with, uh, regards to doing the, um, the playthroughs and they set me up so I could stream, I could live stream those games, uh, through Twitch. Uh, when you're done live streaming, then you can download the content, upload it to YouTube and so forth. So, um, you know, if there's some folks that are familiar with that, you know, maybe we have uh some some people on the team that aren't as, as tech savvy but you know maybe somebody could write up a, an article on uh, hey here's you know if, if you've got the computer game but you don't know how to how to you know create a video out of this you know here's here's how you do it here's the here's the tools you need to install and kind of kind of do a step-by-step -step, uh you know even, even something like that i think would be uh beneficial that's good so cognizant of the time um Couple things for uh, Chicago because we're going to get asked probably in about February if there's some things we're going to do based on previous discussions with Jacob and others. Um, one of the things we were talking about um, is to have uh, a little stratomatic thing where people can actually show it off, and you know, because there's some people like myself I've never seen it. And I know there's uh, a big, strong following in in uh, Sabre around that. And whether it's a little tournament or something, um, of course, we're going to want someone else to run that. And we got to see how much room we have. John, you being in Chicago and having all those games, man, I'm sitting here thinking, wow, that'd be great if you could bring a bunch out. We set you up at a table and uh, um, and I think it would uh, get a lot of discussion going um probably would be you know set up and, and we'd have to get people to watch it for you at times because you know you want to get involved and see things too but um kind of uh, where they sell the books and stuff and that's that's what jacob had suggested to us at one point so <clears throat> if you've got some ideas of what we could do in chicago um we may be able to get a, a really good speaker um somebody might have research that they want to to uh, show if I ever get off my butt and do the stuff I want to finish, either I'll present it here some night or uh, um, I'm hoping to present it there because I think it uh, it absolutely proves nothing, but I think it is great fodder for uh, uh, talk around uh, a few pops or something a little more uh, significant. Um, yeah, just pop Elwood. We don't drink anything else. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um anyway so i mean i i you know like i did the first iteration and now i've changed it now i've just got to run it and try to grab some data out of it um anyway derek you got you got anything else to add well i, I guess along those lines same same deal in chicago you know uh you know my thought uh, baltimore kind of came together pretty quickly for me so i wasn't able to, to do what i wanted there but you know, maybe have a few laptops set up with some old computer games so people that aren't familiar with them, you know, we, at, at, at the very least, you know, uh, hey, crank up this game, play an inning or two, show them how it works. Um, yeah, if we could, I, I would agree, some, some type of tournament would be amazing you know, if we could have that set up. Uh, I know Ted just threw in the chat, we need a bigger room. <laughs> we we kind of got... We kind of squeezed into the conference room we had in Baltimore. Uh, what did we have? Fifty of us, and uh, it was a room with twelve chairs, I think, something like that. So, uh, uh, but um, yeah, definitely, definitely something like that. I, I think for you know we're talking about year one for for Mark and I, and then uh, uh, you know as we progress, I know you know one of the one of the goals with Saber is obviously to put together some type of a research uh, project and. Uh, you know, that's something we can consider definitely, but I don't know if we have uh, enough, enough time to, to throw it together, together for uh, Chicago. I don't think we have, I don't think we have time to, you know, 
kind of a group research and I, you know what, I, you know, and it's something we can all discuss at some point. I think it's, I think it's more important to try to support guys that have already started some research and are doing things and, you know, Hey, I need help with this or I need help with that because let's face it, you're, you know, you're going to be passionate about what you're doing. And, uh, you know, if you can find somebody else who can share a little bit of that passion and willing to give you some time and help, um, you know, I, I see Tim there and listen to what he was, he was talking about these models and that. And I know we've got a couple of members. I'm not sure they're here tonight. One who was working on his own game uh, that we heard about last uh, at our last meeting. And then there was another one who emailed us who's it's actually, I think his job out of Montreal, who is uh, also working on a game for, uh, uh, for your phones and stuff. So um, we got programmers here, Tim. Um that that you know they're game but it's you know in the game there's models right so <clears throat> various things so i think i think i think there's support there uh, but again you know i wish they'd let us send out about our meetings and that to everybody other than a little blurb and uh you know they, they kind of are insistent we stay kind of within our own group in that and we're trying to expand out um but we're seeing we're seeing minor growth and that's that's good that's good um but anyway, well, one one thought, you know, along the lines of what what Tim was saying there, um, you know, you, you, we've got a couple avenues as far as reaching out to fellow members. You've got the Facebook group. Uh, we do have uh, on the Saber website. There's a there's a group uh, forum in there. You can definitely post something, you know, along those lines there. What you're looking for. Um, so that's that's kind of the whole idea. Is there's you know. Uh, 200 something of us, you know, maybe, maybe you get lucky and there, and there's, you know, five or 10 guys that, that know what you're talking about. And maybe a few of them uh, would be willing to help you. So, yeah. you know, or, or maybe you get overwhelming response, who knows? So, um, you know, whatever, whatever the question might be. Uh, I think there were, there were some questions in the group uh, a month back about one of the, uh, one of the games and, and several people, you know, replied right back like, oh yeah, you can do this. And, you know, here's, here's the menu option. And, uh, you know, you can, you can get lost in, uh, for example, and out of the park, there's just so many, so many knobs and, and, uh, and wheels and different, different options in there that, you know, you could go down the rabbit hole, but, uh, some, somebody knows how to, how to do it. Right. So I think this is a great place to, you know, you know, reach out to your, your fellow, uh, committee members and, you know, if you have a question on something, uh, I'm pretty sure somebody probably has the answer. You know, and if somebody wants to just set up a tournament or something, I'm sure you could get enough guys to come in. You know, Andy will run the auction for you. Yeah, uh, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> okay. Well, seeing the time in that, um, you know, if anybody's got a question or something they want to say, just raise your hand before before we take any of that, though. Um, I'm just going to take an opportunity to wish everybody uh, a very Merry Christmas because our next meeting's in the new year. Uh, probably when I talk to you next time, it will be minus 40 here. Um, <laughs> and uh, I will keep you updated with that. But uh, hey, man, that's that's what happens when you live in the Great White North. That's right. <clears throat> oh, okay. I'll, I'll mention one other thing here. Um, uh, we, the uh, meeting in January, uh, we'll have a guest speaker. Um, it's Clay Dresslock from uh, uh, Baseball Mobile, and I uh, believe before that he uh, worked with Stormfront Studios on some of the Tony Russa games. Um, so uh, that's the uh, that's the plan for January. Um, I've, I've got a few others potentially lined up. Nothing firm yet. Um, if any of you guys, you know, the games that you play, if you have any contacts. Uh, potential speakers you want to hear from, let us know. Or if you know if you have uh, info on how to get a hold of some of these folks, uh, you know, I, I I find it very interesting to, to hear from the guys that have, you know, actually uh, put the time and effort into actually, you know, either program out one of these games or come up with a, a you know, a new tabletop game or whatever the case may be. So yeah. Uh, anyway, look, looking forward to doing more of those. Uh, you know, guess either virtual events, um, and like Mark said, maybe you know, uh, get somebody out uh, in Chicago, give us give us an hour long uh, talk as well with a with a Q and A session. So,
Okay. Right. Well, that's good. You're still all paying attention because your heads are going this way. In the auction, right. sometimes, you know, the head goes this way, <laughs> you know, and I'm sure Andy goes, no, 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 no. It's supposed to go this way, guys. Um, exactly. I, I have uh, one of the courses I teach. I haven't taught it for a few years, but use an example in accounting and, and we do an auction. And uh, I used to have a lot of fun with that because back when I lived in Ontario, my wife and I often on a, on a weekend or through the week would go, go to an actual auction. And um, um, there's not as many out here. And I actually, I actually enjoy that. That was something I used to enjoy. Um, but anyway, it's a lot of fun. Okay. okay, folks. Well, we'll call her quits. We'll see you all in January. Uh, stay safe. Have a good Christmas. Um, you know, hopefully you'll get something baseball related. Uh, under the tree santa be good to you um or maybe just go buy yourself something under the tree um yeah, there's always my, gift cards and you know maybe, i know my uh, wife gets my wife and kids get mad at that because they go hey mar hey dad uh we can't buy you anything because you just go buy it yourself <laughs> yeah pretty much so okay folks it's right. good meeting good meeting everybody yep See you guys. Uh, see you guys see in January. Take care. January. Happy holidays. Yeah. yeah. Have a good Take one. care. Good night. All right. Have a good night.